Dan Carlson, come on up. This is our most useful mic. It isn't getting any static, so just hold on to it and use it like a mic. Hello. There's one. Uh, before I knew anything about turning, this was the first tool I bought, but I broke it off at the stem. So this was my opportunity to make a new handle for it, and I did it. Put a flat spot on it so it won't roll. But, and I don't know what that wood is. It was something that had been laying around in the garage for a while. So that's what I did. Um, from Packer Tool, this is the one-way adapter. Uh, it's real easy to make. They even sell a little template uh, that shows you the angle here. And basically, after you do that, you just screw this on. I make it extra deep so that when it transports, I undo this and uh, stick the uh, turning tool inside and protects the uh, edge. Uh, the uh, they make them in like from quarter up to a half. Man, they're real cheap. I think they're like eight dollars, and the template tool is like a dollar. This is by the foot down there by the old Sears store. Uh, this is an uh, inch and a quarter uh, aircraft aluminum. Uh, cost is about eight dollars for this size. This is almost 20 inches long. Uh, <clears throat> the Carter and Son handle that uh, makes this thing, uh, theirs is like $90. Uh, I, ha I have a total, including with the plastic sleeve, which comes from Strausser, uh, about $10 invested in this. This makes it real nice and everything else like that. The way you... Yeah, after you drill this, which you can do on your own lathe, because the aluminum is real soft. Uh, the only trick to doing uh, the aluminum handle is center punch it first, take your first cut uh, just a little bit in. <clears throat> if you happen to have a tool and die maker, they have a drill bit that's only got about uh, this big, and it centers it. And once it's centered, then it'll take a regular standard uh, drill bit and go uh, all the way through. That's the only trick to doing that. And then this is just this regular uh, quarter 20 threads, uh, you know, like that. But the way to get this uh, water sleeve on, because it's just hose, is <clears throat> do not put it in the microwave. Uh, I don't want to tell you how I found that one out. Uh, but just put it underneath uh, hot water in your sink, in a deep sink, and it'll slide on, go about so far, and then it'll stop. And then you just let the water go for a while, and it'll slide on a little bit farther. And you just keep on doing it, and it'll finally slide on. Uh, actually, this ends up mimicking the uh, one-way handle. And... Uh, it has no temperature uh, like uh, the Carter and Son. This is a Carter and Son scraper. Great material, but their aluminum handles are ice cold in the winter. These tools were made by uh, Kevin Dealey. Here's his famous Holloway one, and I won that uh, one night, and it wasn't handled. I like the longer handle and a little skinnier one than he does. Then this one was also one of Neely's tools, and it's like the uh, uh, easy wood tools with a carbide piece on there. And I just like a nice long handle on there. 
There, there we go. Well, I made this uh, swan neck tool uh, and uh, made it out of uh, the steel. Uh, and I've used it with no handle at all. So since we had a challenge to make a handle, I decided to, to make a handle for it. So I took a, uh, a piece of um, maple, split it down the middle, uh, cut a piece that's three-eighths of an inch, the same thickness as this tool, and uh, glued them together with a piece of um, grocery sack in between them, turned the turn the diameter to match the um, the width of the tool. And then I broke them apart and was going to make just down to the end of the, to the end of the, uh, the steel. And then I thought, well, I've got some extra wood here. So I extended this. I inserted a piece of three eighths uh, oak in there. And, um, and then I, what I did is I took a piece of uh, three eighths piece of wood with uh, band clamps and turned the end of the uh, of the handle to to make it round and then tapped and drilled the screws to hold the handle onto the uh, tool. Okay. Um, Gary Munhanke here, and I uh, made this out of oak. And um, from the last meeting, Mike said he liked uh, you know tools that don't roll around on the on the on the, on the bed of the lathe. Um, so that was the intent. It's uh, triangular, trilobular. Um, however, it didn't work out quite as planned because the the steel is quite a bit heavier, so it it kind of doesn't really uh, stop rocking. So, but I also like it. Um, it's a good, um, the, the flats here are, are perfect for putting my thumb when I'm holding it to kind of keep things lined up. So um, this, I did it on a uh, CNC lathe. So it's um, pocketed deeply here and it tapers to around in the front. So something, uh, it'd be very difficult to do uh, on a traditional lathe. So any questions? Your ferrule, is that just uh... Pipe. Yeah, yeah, that's just uh, a copper pipe. Uh, I epoxied it in. Thanks. Last month, uh, Mike had not mentioned Cindy Droz to tools uh, or handles, um, and this is one of them. They're uh, octagonal and then rounded a little bit on the edges so they feel good in the hand. Um, that was what I was basing my handle on. Uh, I have the scraper and I have a green adapter like this that this was drilled for. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the the green adapter when I was going to get this together. So as soon as I'm looking for something else, the green one will show up. Linda Carlson, this is Sycamore with boiled linseed oil. And I turned the handle and Dan helped me with the, yeah, with the little barrel thing. And yeah, so we got it together. <laughs> Thank you. Many years ago, Jerry Darter and I were the winning bidders on a Jimmy Clues what would you call that? A tool handle or a, it, it's a collet in here. I'll demonstrate real quick. He even has his name on it right there. But the nice thing is, it's just a twist. And then the, 
tool comes out. I like, I like all of my tools to be able to take off for sharpening, mostly my bowl gouges and that sort of thing. But, um, you know, when you epoxy in your tool, then you have to, it's just a little bit more difficult. So anyway, this is, this is a, a is it an eccentric inside here? It's a cam. It's a cam lock. Okay. Anyway, I think ten bucks is what we what we paid for it. I don't even think they even make them anymore. Yeah, they're not ten bucks. Oh, he does make them for this for this thing right here. Oh, get out of town. <laughs> okay, I will. Anyway, it, it's a it's a neat. Oh, and then, but I made the handle uh, out of the binga. I uh, bought it from Metro Hardwoods, and that's my story. I came late to the party. I didn't get back to turning until last week, and all of a sudden I realized I hadn't met up with the challenge, and so I was trying really hard to do that. So I made a little handle here, and I'm going to put a... Uh, piece of metal in here, still in here. And that's my handle. And this one here, I was fooling around. I said, I'm late to the party. I don't know what I'm going to make. And they said, well, you could use that. And so I decided I'm going to carry this as a handle, not for turning, but for plastic bags when I go to the grocery store, but so my hand doesn't hurt. So I put the handle there. <laughs> This represents some kind of a uh, uh, a transition that happened over a few years. Um, part of it starts out, I may have told this story already. I apologize if I have. Uh, I was going to turn hollow forms, big hollow forms. And at the time, all I had was uh, the sweat block uh, uh, bowl gouges. And the uh, piece I was working on was soft maple. It was about 24 inches tall and 18 inches wide. It had uh, what three and a half, four inch diameter opening in it. And um, so the handle that came on this gouge um, quickly became too short. It's a wrong uh, tool to use, right? I mean, just the wrong tool. Okay. I didn't know yet. And uh, so I said, okay, well, I'm going to put a bit of your handle on it. And what I did was use this wood. This is uh, birch. And I it, I think the handle's a little bit longer. And I put a, um, a three quarter inch swept back uh, uh, bowl gouge in it and promptly broke the handle. So then I went down to uh, metal by the foot and uh, I bought, I think this, this was uh, four feet long. It's uh, a quarter inch wall, three quarter inch ID. And uh, it worked pretty well for a while. You could take wood out and stuff. <laughs> and, it, and it became too short. So um, I went and bought a seven foot piece. This is the end of it. Uh, mm -hmm. And so the seven foot piece, uh, if you could get it, when you got it lifted up, I mean, I did succeed. Uh, the pipe would flex when I had catches um, and it, uh, it bent that three quarter inch piece of tool steel. And so I, I put that away I, and started to learn better ways to do things. Uh, this is a, a later attempt to uh, do something useful with this tool, which I bought early on everybody or no not everybody lots of people early on they buy big tools hey yeah let's turn something big we buy big tools we're happy and so this was a a fairly long uh scraper had a handle about uh this long on it which is obviously too short um and so over time i changed a little bit here a little bit there and i got a uh, coal forge and i uh, uh heated and tried to create a square box to fit that tool in and it, I never got it to not vibrate, even when it was in the wood handle, right? I mean, I, I couldn't handle it. I've been shy of uh, scrapers ever since. This tool, on the other hand, is very good. This is uh, 
only uh, a five inch or five eighths inch ID, uh, still has the quarter inch wall. And this is uh, uh, one of the black handled um, glazer, glazer tools. I bought it uh, here at the club years and years ago at an auction. And it works really nice. It's a nice, easy weight. Um, I don't like real light tools. This uh, represents another transition that happened for me. Uh, these are hollowing tools. They are homemade and or home assembled. Uh, this one. It was just a boring bar with a 3 16 inch piece of tool steel in it. And it had a handle that was maybe this long, but much thinner. And I worked and worked with it for years. I mean, I made things with it, but it was really uncomfortable. And so finally, about five years ago, I said, gosh, I wonder what would happen if I put a big handle on that. And it works very nice. It's bigger in diameter, so I have a better grip on it. It's longer. Uh, one of the problems with a tool like this is uh, the cutting uh, point of uh, cutting is right here and so that's way outside and it torques the tool and so you have to be able to hang on to it this is one of Kevin's tools and the same thing happened I had uh, you may have even had two uh, handles on them when we first got them the first few times yeah and there were little bitty handles and it's the same thing I was using it with this and it occurred to me that a big handle something that you can grab and it has a little more length. It works real well. What? Yep. Yeah. This tool uh, I made because uh, Danny had the auction in, in Lawrence. He was the guy who ran a, a tool store up north. And someone gave me this uh, front end and it's uh inch and a half, two inches long, fits in here. This tool is hollow because this is a double-ended tool. And so one half of it goes in through uh, that sleeve and I can uh, turn it around and use the other end. And this is made out of Coca Bolo. It's one of my favorite tools. I've had it for 20 years. I really like it. Uh, the only thing else that's kind of uh, at all interesting is uh, this is jute. Use it for uh, stringing up your tomatoes. And I would spread uh, epoxy uh, on the pipe and then wrap. It's very nice when it's cold out. The steel is very cold on your fingers, so make them cramp up. I won't drop it this time. What? Hey, I can see myself. <clears throat> I, I only have two tools that I brought up. Um, this is the one that I that I turned this month. It's a triangular shaped handle. And the tool that I'm going to use it with has not arrived yet. So I didn't drill a hole for it yet. Um, I think I saw David Ellsworth do like an article on this years ago. And I tried it. And then I ended up, it ended up just turning out round. So I did it wrong. Um, but I figured out how to do it this time. So I don't know how I feel about it, though. It's a weird shape after you've been using round tools for, you know, seven or eight years. So, um, <clears throat> but um, if you look at the end there, you can see. Uh, all the different centers that I used to get it. And then I just used a little bit of sandpaper to round off the um, <clears throat> top edges there to make it nice and smooth. So, but this tool, <clears throat> um, you saw me use it tonight. This is one of my favorite tool handles. And the only reason why I brought it, I did make it. Um, I didn't make the top. The top here comes from Robust. Uh, it is a collet system. And... <clears throat> I liked it so much that I have multiple of them now, but it uses a standard size collet, which you can change out depending on the shaft of your tool. So this one I have set up for using half inch tools and I have a uh, two shorter ones that I use for half inch and three eighths inch tools. Um, and this one will fit a five eighths inch tool as well. Uh, it's really nicely made. 
Um, and uh, and I like that you can adjust it, unlike the Jimmy Clues, which I'm pretty sure you can't change the diameter of that. Yeah, this I can put in a different collet if I want a different size. Uh, good question. So if you buy the whole... <laughs> Well, that's a good point. I I wasn't around back then, so I don't know. Um, if you buy the whole set, um, they make a full tool handle you can buy from them. They use maple. It's nice. They drill out half the handle so you can put your entire tool reversed back in, which is pretty nice. But I made this out of hickory, um, and I bought just the assembly. It didn't even come with collets. I had to buy collets. Just the assembly was $60 which it's really nicely machined. Um, but if you buy the whole thing with collets, it's like 120 bucks yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can buy these cheap from somewhere else for about four or five bucks a piece, so. Yeah, I know. It's that, it's, that, it's that Irish people that Sean got a hold of it and did it. Uh, it's it's shaped like this. It fits. This was made. There was a I can't remember the guy's name that had the Saturn bowls. He, you basically the tool was made so you can make. An outer ring that'll spin when you turn the bowl. You turn the edge of the bowl, and in the outer ring will spin. It will turn. So they call it, he calls it a Saturn bowl. And I, ha I had to make the tool. They, you, that's part of the class was you make the tool, and then you use it. Well, I never could get my ring to stay on. But uh, then I went one step farther, and I cut the the Celtic knot in it, and the two different. The differences between the two ends is the difference of the angles that you cut it at. That was a great set of uh, challenge tool handles uh, that you guys showed tonight. So I appreciate you all uh, participating. I think, uh, Mike, we need to draw for our challenge tool, our challenge winner. All right, our secretary, Calvin, is going to pick our winner tonight. Number six three zero. Number six three zero. Rick Tucker. All right. So it, it's not the face shield. The face shield's the dollar <laughs> sweepstakes. It's the insert. And then Tony also gave some more um, acrylic heat part particles to use in projects. Mike. <laughs> okay, I failed uh, to actually make the drawing for the face shield, Mike. If we could get our dollar sweepstakes bowl, um, I was supposed to do that right after we ate, but I always get anxious. So, so this is this is for this the face shield that that we have back there. Okay, so this is the face shield 615. Do we got a 615? All right. And, and thank you, everybody, for participating in the dollar sweepstakes. That actually does feed the coffer a little bit every month. So 
Um, one other thing that I forgot to mention is there is a load bucket, round bucket there that has a bunch of uh, almost finished turned bowls that Effie, I think, left behind when before he moved back to Israel. Every one of them are, are ready to finish off. So anybody interested in having a, a good start on a bowl, just grab a chunk out of there and then play with it and have fun. Okay, now let's get to our uh, show and tell. So if you've got a show and tell item, come on up and show us what you got. And the X on the table does mark the spot for the overhead camera. Mike. Well, this was something I've been thinking about for probably the last three or four years. And it probably took me six months off and on to complete it. There is 1,562 pieces in this little piece here with 1,560 just in the design ring alone. Um, I had an eighth inch beading tool which is why I made each level an eighth of an inch so that when I made my basket weave, it would turn out like this. So I finished it with uh, clear spray um, enamel and it seemed to do fine. I'm sorry? How far? All the way? No. Okay. No, I just I just did it down to the bottom of the gotcha. design ring. But I started out with started out with the design ring and um uh, then I had a piece of uh, this is cucumber cucumber magnolia uh for the bowl and I made a bowl, cut the top out of it and inserted the the uh, design ring. Any other questions? How did I do that? Um, very carefully with a wood burner. Well, thank you. Turned out turned out a lot better than I expected it to. I brought uh, two, right? I mean, maybe I brought that one before. I didn't want to show it again. So I just turned this uh, Saturday, finished it Saturday. I turned it partially on Thursday. This uh, this is a twice turn, well, it was going to be a twice turn thing, except uh, I turned it too thin so I could only turn it once. Uh, it's a little oval looking. And so this was a new idea I had about making an urn. You know, they say you can't take it with you. And so I put a little extra little uh, container in there so you can put your stuff in there and take it with you. <laughs> And it's kind of uh, apropos of this other one. This is actually uh, you. This one is. And uh, I've turned you before. I got some you from uh, Pacific Northwest. And it um, it was nice. It was already turned into uh, billets. It was, uh, I don't remember how what the diameter was. Three, maybe it was this big, maybe a little bigger. Um, and it was all the sapwood was turned off. I liked it a lot. It was, uh, I made uh, some animal urns out of it. And I also turned some uh, uh, some other vases that I had gotten in my neighborhood. A friend of mine took me to one of their friend's house, and there were some freshly uh, dug up of this stuff. Uh, on the internet, by the way, when you look it up, it called, they call it, it's called the tree of death. Uh, I didn't know that. I'd never looked it up. Uh, it turns out that every single part of it, except uh, what's inside the fruit, not the seed, but the pulp, just the pulp, is not uh, toxic. Everything else about it is toxic. Uh, and I turned it inside of a closed room. Uh, and it took me uh, 10, 15 days before I could breathe easily. And so I finished turning it and sanded it inside of my garage which has a big door, a double door on one end and a single door on the other end. And I did it on a windy day. 
So I guess there have been more of it. And I I have a whole bunch of this too. I want some. <laughs> Okay. I'm not sure what the word was on this, but I want to donate this for the twenty dollar thing for the club. Um, and this one was some alum from our front yard, and then I put the walnut on here. One of the interesting things about this one was it had a crack in it, and I just filled it with epoxy and some of that stuff that I brought in uh, for the challenge. And they're all finished with two coats of water locks and then buffed with Beals buff and wax thing. So there's that. So um, this is made out of ash. Uh, I call it my diamond plate bowl. Um, kind of interesting too. I uh, this is uh, made on a CNC uh, lathe also to get the diamond uh, plate effects on here. Um, but I did finish it. I put it on a traditional lathe to do the sanding around the the exposed wood area, and it's ash. Um, Kind of the interesting thing about this was um, I also had to make up a, a vacuum table um, to suck this down to um, cut all this out after the diamond plate was cut on here. Um, when you do this on a CNC lathe, um, you have a couple different options. You can cut it traditionally, you know, cutting it around like you would do on a traditional lathe, or you can have the router going across and indexing, you know, a, a half degree or something. So um, for this one, I did index it cutting it like a traditional, like going around like this and cutting the diamonds out. Um, the wood exposes, uh, the exposed wood is finished with um, uh, amber shellac too. So any questions on this? Oh, so one other thing is um, the silver on a diamond plate I got as a Christmas present an airbrush. So this is my first attempt also at airbrushing when, as a part of the finish, so. <laughs> Um, this is actually my second one. The first one I did, I um, cut shallower the diamonds, so they weren't that visible. So I I modified it so it's a the the the, the diamonds are sticking out further. Yeah, more proud. So it's it's my second one, but it takes a little bit of programming also. So you know, on a on a uh, you know computer program too, on Aspire to to set all this up. Um, it is also a taper. It curves at the bottom. It's hard to see you know, unless you look at it close. There's a radius here, and then it tapers, and then it tucks underneath to make it look like this is a, you know, the wood was tucked on top of the diamond plate, or that's what I was trying to do anyway. How long did it take to cut that? Um, it was about uh, between two and a half and three hours. So, um, you know, I could have set it faster, but it would reduce the quality of the diamonds too. So it's it's kind of a trade off. How I tend to run it slower, but I'd rather have you know a sharper, more detail, sharper cuts too. Something unique, something different. You're making more. Yeah, I'll probably make a few more of these. Um, I'm working on one now that also has like a basket weave instead of the diamond plate. So uh, maybe I'll bring that if I have it ready for the next meeting. I'll bring it along. making the little $20 bowls. And this is a piece of walnut. And uh, I liked making my beads so much that I suddenly went through. And so I repaired it by uh, dyeing uh, sand as turquoise and then uh, sealing up my mistake.
This is a um, piece of myrtle that I picked up at the San Diego Club. Um, and so I cut it, and it is wonderful wood to cut. It cuts like hot butter and has a nice finish on it. And uh, I kind of like the design. So I picked it up and getting ready to bring it down tonight, and I dropped it and uh, broke a chunk out of the top. So this is the... Uh, the last time you'll see this in this configuration. So I am going to try and uh, uh, salvage it somehow. So thank you. Any other what a great... Uh bunch of sharing though nice nice products nice uh love the handles that you guys made um looking forward to seeing y'all start to utilize the open shop so i'm going to try to get myself in there more often i hope i see some of you in there turning um i know there's several of you that are, are have made it uh already made it in there and and got some turning done so um appreciate everybody coming out we had a great great turnout tonight i wasn't sure the weather was pretty nice so i didn't know if everybody's going to stay home and enjoy the weather but appreciate you coming in we'll do this thing again next month and and phil <laughs> thank you and phil is going to let us know what our challenge is for next month all right that gives you a wide open uh avenue here but uh turn something from green wood and come in and share it with us right there's always wood around so <laughs> so thank you all if i can uh, have a few people help us get the chairs back up there tonight um and i think that'll take care of uh, our